When the Titan submersible imploded, killing all five people on board, the world really sat up and took notice. The search for a missing submersible in the North Atlantic Ocean has ended in the worst case scenario. Because the stakes went beyond just the one ship, it brought the relative risk and reward of an entire industry into question. It is enormously dangerous to go that deep into the ocean, to the very spot where the Titanic sank 100 plus years ago. Even though they signed waivers, I'm not exactly sure they consented to every risk they were taking. And this is a concern, not just for deep sea travel, but also for deep space travel. Virgin Galactic just announced it's ready to send paying customers to the final frontier by the end of this week. So what are the limits? How far can a company legally push the envelope to give effectively anyone with enough money a once in a lifetime opportunity? Our first private astronaut mission. If you ever dreamed of exploring beyond, welcome to the new space age. This Thursday, Virgin Galactic plans to send three Italian scientists up and away to conduct a series of experiments over a span of about 90 minutes, the company's first fully commercial flight. But the bulk of its business plan centers on basically anyone who can pay the $450,000 US price tag. Apparently, around 800 customers are lined up, ready to go, just, just waiting for a seat to open up. And Virgin Galactic is only the most recent player to enter this particular space. Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin has already completed six human space flights. SpaceX has taken private citizens all the way to the International Space Station. But regulations, laws designed to protect those passengers, almost non-existent. So we have a moratorium actually imposed by the U.S. Congress on, space on the regulation of human space flight. Translation, in the United States, the very regulator that makes sure airplanes don't crash, killing everyone on board, is expressly forbidden to create rules or laws that would protect space travelers. That hands-off approach, you know, let these companies regulate their own safety, has been in place for almost 20 years now. This is because it's a very nascent industry and we want to give the companies, we don't want to come, we don't want to be heavy handed on companies um, that are struggling to make money. In 2014, a Virgin Galactic pilot was killed when his spacecraft violently broke apart in midair, crashing into the Californian desert. In 2021, a ship carrying Richard Branson himself went off course. And last year, Blue Origin's New Shepard failed. Nobody on board, but its reusable rocket was destroyed. Now, there is, of course, great incentive for these companies to protect their payloads, right? Any company that wants to do work with the government does have to meet certain criteria, and you can think of NASA's safety standards, for example. And the same thing with Virgin Galactic. Um, they are now pegging themselves as not just tourism, but a research opportunity. They need to bring those people back uh, alive and safe if they want to have a business. So the business model requires an intense amount of safety. The extent to which this kind of self-policing works is very much an experiment in motion. You know, this, this whole let them do their thing attitude for American companies, it, it wasn't originally planned to continue for this long. It's been extended twice now. But there is a feeling out there that, especially in light of what happened to Ocean Gate's Titan, the moratorium against regulation might be allowed to expire this October, which would open the door for Congress to be more involved and lay down stricter standards. Informed consent process is the is what we need to look at now not telling these companies how to run their business but making sure they're telling their customers all of the facts titan going down to the titanic really falls into a big gray area because this is out in international waters so back to where we started ocean gates submersible it wasn't certified by any reputable standards organization, and it wasn't regularly inspected by any outside authority because it operated outside of everybody's jurisdiction. If there was an oversight agency, an entity, the Canadian Coast Guard, the U.S. Coast Guard, or some, some group that oversaw 
Titan, then you can voice those concerns to them. But since it operated in basically unregulated waters in this gray area, there was really no one to warn about them. It's possible Titan was a one-off. You know, it, it may not be a coincidence that of the 10 submersibles that exist in the world capable of diving to the depth of the Titanic, apparently only the Titan was uncertified. This is an industry that up until last week had a pretty clean deep sea safety record. But experts believe there are two sure ways to kill the industry of extreme tourism. Either it is strangled by regulation or through recklessness from a lack of regulation, it destroys itself. And I guess my point is two years after Titanic sinking, we get these rules that change ocean travel. And I'm wondering if a year or two after t Titan sinking, do we get something that changes the rules for submersibles? Do we, do we have international rules, national rules? Because unfortunately, lots of times rules and regulations are written on the backs of accidents. And, and unfortunately, it takes someone to die or so in this case, five people to die for us to realize that maybe we should have measures in, in place. We'll be right back.